I'm pink. A computer scientist from the University of Brasilia, a software engineer by profession, and also a master's student in software engineering by the École de Technologie Supérieure in Montreal. And we're here to talk about a paper that I've been reading on using the intelligent edge for IoT analytics by Pakish Patel et al. Published by the I3E Computer Society in 2017. So, should we have a central, powerful computer capable of processing tons of data from so many different sources? Or should we make all of those different sources somehow more intelligent and capable of doing processing? Well, there is no solution that can fit all scenarios. This is usually how things are in engineering. But it's definitely worth to make small edge, edge devices helping the computations of data. Don't worry, this is all going to be very clear after this video. The concept of the Internet of Things, of IoT, is not new. And it consists of connecting any device to a network. So things like microwaves and cars or surveillance cameras or watches, smartphones, fitness devices, desktop computers, any kind of device you can imagine that can be connected to the internet of things, so there are things in there. So a wide variety of distributed things that are everywhere can be connected, generating a very heterogeneous kind of network, or in other words, a network with different kinds of devices, with different capabilities and resources. It works by having these devices connected to a platform which integrates them all and let them share information based on the data they analyze. So nowadays everyone talks about data and that's because it's very easy today to generate large amounts of data. But data is just raw facts that tell nothing unless they are analyzed to reveal meaning. So, for example, you can understand data from a person as a set of symptoms. Well, data from a person can be symptoms. It could be that a person has a high body temperature, a shortness of breath, and a cough. And that data can be analyzed to give us the information that such person might be sick with COVID-19, coronavirus. Oh, so if we have more data, such as the results of a lab test, we can have more accurate information. So you get a lot of data and then you kind of filter it, you read the data, you analyze it, you process it, you give it context and it becomes information. So data analytics is driving the development, the development of many fields and it's not different in the field of IoT or the Internet of Things. Many interesting ideas pop to my mind when I think about the IoT. But anyway, corresponding to that, there was a proliferation of cloud-based centralized data analytic platforms. So like Amazon AWS, where people buy servers and very powerful machines that they can sit like central brains, they can process a lot of stuff. And the current approach is to send data to, from sensors over the network to decentralized platforms where the processing is made and decisions are made. So the current approach is get data, send it there. It works pretty well, but there is room for improvement because such solutions, they can have high bandwidth costs or latency. Or in other words, it's expensive to be sending big amounts of data between edge devices, things that are not in the central server, and the centralized brains, which is the server. And also, it takes time to do that, that's the latency. You need to send a package and wait till it gets there. It also costs money to do that. They also assume that connectivity is always stable between the devices and the centralized server, which is not always true. And finally, there are no regulations that can play a role in security concerns of sharing data. So if you buy a server on Amazon, Amazon, is it going to have access to your data? Hmm. Encrypted. <laughs> but that's a subject for another paper, maybe. Anyway, think about the new coronavirus. In a good light, I guess. You'll get anxiety from it. 
I'm sorry if I'm causing you this. Uh, this example is good. Because people get tested in small towns, like me. I am in a small town right now. And that test, I actually got tested. And my test had to travel to Montreal. So people get tested in a small town that needs to send the samples with the data to, the, to a big city where there is a lab to process the testing. And then send the results back to the patient in a small town. So it takes time for the sample to travel. And the person has to be patient, very patient, not in, even though it's probably impatient because it might be sick. But anyway, the person has to be very patient to wait for the results to travel to the big city. And there might be so many small towns sending samples to the delivery that so that the delivery gets delayed everywhere. The, and the, maybe the central lab can cope with the demand. So there's a lot of bureaucracy involved and the patient also has to trust that their body symbol, like part of your body, will not be sharing data with an entity that is, I don't know, discriminating people that have coronavirus or they can get your DNA maybe and discriminate you. I don't know, it's an example, but that can actually happen. And it will be a lot better if there were devices capable of both collecting the sample and processing the test and giving the results straight away for the impatient person and then sending only the results to the hospital or maybe to the government. And having intelligence at the edge of the networks can be definitely helpful. When we're talking about the IoT, this concept can be called the fog computing. So, this concept, fog computing. Fog computing is used in the paper to outline an intelligent approach for IoT analytics. So, this concept of fog computing is not new. The authors are using it to, to solve a problem. Uh, the approach presented by the authors aims to facilitate automated transitions between edge and cloud, depending on the dynamic conditions of the IoT infrastructure and application requirements. That's a big mouthful, but it's... In other words, <laughs> their approach is, to, is supposed to be useful in context of having both intelligence at the edges of a network while also having the ability to use the powerful central units to make ends meet or to get the best of both the intelligent edge and the powerful central brain. This leads us to talk about the applications of these platforms because this has to be useful. I think it is. This is discussed in the paper in a, se in a section of potential use where they thought of three possible uses. So as, they, as the authors put it, open quote, Data analytics has been used successfully to design innovative smart applications that facilitate large communities, including smart cities, smart enterprises, and smart buildings, as well as industry needs such as smart manufacturing, smart farming, and business services. End quote. So, one of the potential applications presented in the paper is for the surveillance camera system. A common problem in this domain is to how do we deal with the network traffic that so many high definition videos can be that can be sent across the infrastructure or should we send low quality videos? No, we need high quality videos too. <laughs> so a common problem in the domain of surveillance is how do we deal with the bandwidth thing? And a, po a possible solution is presented by the paper and it consists of intelligence programmed into the cameras themselves to solve the high bandwidth problem. So basically, cameras could make decisions based on calculation, calculations made on the cameras themselves. So if a camera detected some sort of set patterns in the image, that could be used to make the cameras and messages more often. So the cameras can also use the information they receive from other types of sensors connected to the network. So the paper is really clear to describe how a very interesting infrastructure can be deployed in different ways to suffice different needs. But it also states that the challenges needed to overcome the current technological deficits to implement what they propose. Infrastructure is one of my favorite fields of interest in computer science. It's the field I chose to develop, to develop my working career on. So maybe I'm biased, <laughs> but I find the subject really fascinating. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I would love to be paid to implement a system like, like what's described in the paper. Ah, yeah. well, anyway, I believe that it could definitely be worth startup material in the sense that a startup company could easily be based on this paper, similar to what's being done by the Canadian company Ormuco. 
that's based in Montreal. Anyway, to design, to design such intelligent systems at the edge, some considerations must be made. Such a system receives a request from an application, then based on the system context and the ob objectives of the user, it divides the analytic task into segments, which could be processed by the network nodes called surrogates, and finally have the results returned to the user's application. It said, I said it could be processed, and not that it will be processed, because edge networks can always have devices that are not always available. The approach presented is really clever at considering the availability problem of the IoT devices. This is done by assigning different roles to devices in the network, where each element has one or more roles. There are five distinct roles. We can think of this fog network as a network of having nodes where each element has one or more roles. So there are the surrogate, which is a fog node that can be used to offload a portion of a large analytic task. The offloaded task is then executed on a surrogate and the results are sent back to the initiating fog node. Well, this is how the, the, the scientists in this paper they modeled the solution to, to, to make their fog network, make the edges intelligent. So there is also another kind of structure, which is a context manager, which is a fog node that can periodically monitor the status of surrogates and then provide the context information to other components for decision making. So in other words, their job is to keep track of which surrogate can be used in tasks or to decide if they are qualified or not for a task. I, I'm not sure of this part. I think they, they just send the information to other nodes. So I think they make the decisions. Anyway, it's better explained in the paper <laughs> if you're going to implement this. Remember that IoT networks are composed by many different devices that can have different computing powers. So it's important to keep track of how they're doing, what they're doing, how available their resources are. Anyway, there's the partitioner which is a fog node that segments an analytic task at the design time in a way that it can be used by an offloading process node. So the, the partitioner can talk to another process, uh, another node that we're, talk about, we're going to talk about next. In other words, what, what parts of an application could be executed, distributed, and what parts should be execution, executed sequentially in a powerful node. So this is the job of the partitioner. The, the heart of technology by the Apache suggested to implement this thing in the paper. And there's also the offloading, which is a process that maps during runtime which part should be offloaded to surrogates and which part should be executed locally. And it does this by using information from the context manager nodes we just heard about. And after the partitioner decides to map each segment to a surrogate, the first kind of element we're talking about, and offloading. This offloading process, which is a node that takes care of this process, migrates that segment task to the surrogates. And you can think of Docker technology, right? this, like it's suggested in the, in the paper, to implement this. And finally, we have storage nodes to keep data accessible for the nearby nodes. And before you jump into implementing this, the wonderful concept presented in the paper, remember that I mentioned that currently there are gaps in the technology requirements to build an intelligent system at the edge. So it's like the authors put it. Open quote. Application development for IoT in fog computing is a challenging task because of the associated dynamicity. The goal is to allow for analytic, analytic tasks to dynamically scale based on the context in the fog. End quote. So the programming models have to evolve and it's currently hard for the developers to cope with such dynamicity. There are applications to tackle these problems, but they were developed for homogeneous app, apps in cloud environments. So only one type of device or similar devices, and they need modifications to better suit the heterogeneity of folk infrastructure so that apps can be deployed on the edge nodes. So that's all I had this time. Thank you. I hope you like hearing about fog computing and using the intelligence of edge devices for the IoT analytics. You can find the sources in the video description. And thank you, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you for your attention. I hope I can see you again in the future. <laughs>